There is good news for us today, and it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 24th chapter. Lord. Jesus describes his second coming as a sudden, turbulent event that will bring about deep change to our normal, day-to-day -day lives. Therefore, he urges people to stay awake, be aware, and wait expectantly, because the Son of Man will come unannounced. Now the reading. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, through some wonderful technology, you all may be seated. Um, I received this week a um, communication from Synod with a message from our Bishop Elizabeth Eaton on Advent. Um, we'll be receiving these in the office every week, but um, since Pastor won't be here, we decided we would use that as a sermon, and then we will go around and ask you traditions. Um, I was able to forward it to Roland, and through his technology, you're going to hear it through the PA system. So, On Sunday, a new liturgical year begins. The first Sunday in Advent always reminds us that even as we try and often fail to neatly arrange our schedules, our lives, and our world, we are invited afresh into God's time. The Advent hymn, each winter as the year grows older, may ring especially true this year for you. Each winter, as the year grows older, we each grow older too. The chill sets in a little colder. The verities we knew seem shaken and untrue. When race and class cry out for treason, when sirens call for war, they overshout the voice of reason and scream till we ignore all we held dear before. This Sunday, in the prophetic words of Isaiah, we hear the familiar yet revolutionary message of a future day when God brings a universal transformational reign of peace. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. I don't know about you, but especially as the chill sets in colder, I long deeply for this new world. In the midst of another difficult year punctuated by war, disaster, and continued pandemic, 
this new world sounds so liberating, warm, and comforting. And most of the time, it feels very far away. During this Advent season, how might we bring Isaiah's vision to our own communities? What swords do we long to be beaten into plowshares? What spears do we hope will be transformed into pruning hooks? As members of the ELCA, we seek to answer these questions as we accompany refugees fleeing violence and oppression in many parts of the world, or when we respond to the famine and drought that is plaguing so many parts of God's creation, or when we lift up leaders who foster ministries of fellowship and justice in our communities. We long for peace, and so we act, empowered by the generosity of this church. In Sunday's gospel, Jesus urges his followers to stay awake, be present, wait expectantly. Jesus encourages our active participation in God's transformational reign, especially here and now. Through your gifts to the many vibrant ministries of our church, you, a member of the leadership circle, are bringing forth God's radical new world, one plowshare and pruning hook at a time. Thank you so much for this treasured partnership. As we journey again this year through this weekly Leadership Circle Advent series, know that as you use these devotions in your home, your congregations, and your Bible studies, you are joined by the fellowship of other steadfast supporters across the church. Each week, you will hear from other key leaders who will share a brief reflection on the readings appointed for each Sunday of Advent, telling stories of ELCA ministries that have changed their lives and changed the lives of others. Our hymn goes on to say, yet I believe beyond believing that life can spring from death. As you sing these words this Advent, let it be a prayer for you. Blessings to you, dear church, as we move into this new year. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, come, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Blessed Advent. <laughs>